They needed a big second half for Manchester City. A goal down, remember, uh, at half time. And those two goals inside three minutes did the job. First of all, from Bernardo Silva, Adam. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just a quality player, but this, this is the difference, Rodri, is that he, he gets through the lines there, a little bit of skill, and there's a coming together, both as bad as each other. I don't think that's a foul, him and, uh, him and Lockyer. But then the finish from, uh, from Bernardo Silva is just quality, the way he guides it into the, uh, into the corner. He doesn't get it the first time, but he stays alive. Look, you know, he's got half a second to think about that, to know what he's going to do knows where the goal is and he just guides it with a little bit of bend on it in that uh, into the corner and the goalkeeper's got no chance. Real quality, Jacob, from Bernardo Silva. Real quality. Um, I think because it comes at him so quickly, he, he has no time to think. So it's just get in that contact, find the corner and obviously use, use defenders that are in the way as well. Mm. And just to clear up, no foul. Luton wanted a foul on Tom Lockyer. No foul. I mean, Lockyer plays the ball, but it's just a coming together. There's no way he can get it out of the way and... If anything, I'll be looking for a penalty there, but uh, no, I think it's play on and um, Bernardo give it what it deserves because it was a good run from Rodri. Now, Jack Grealish, the match winner, why did you say it was such a big goal for Jack Grealish? I just don't think he's had that big moment. You know, he's had nearly moments, even with the Man City game against Tottenham when he broke away at the end and the referee never played advantage. I think he needed a winning goal and they're having a poor time. Now, it's not the biggest occasion, you wouldn't think, but after not winning in five, you know, it is a massive game. They needed to get back to winning ways. And, and I think um, you're dreaming for chances like this, Jacob. Yeah. Um, you know, it ends up being a nice, um, a nice little tap in at the back post, but you've got to be in them positions to, to get the goal. And there he is. How many of these you scored? A few of these, aren't you? <laughs> Should probably get in the back stick a bit more. I might have some more goals. <laughs> That's where you get your goals. I mean, Alan, I tell you, six yard bumps. I mean, he scored most of his in there, didn't you, Al? It's a brilliant ball in from Alvarez. No harm in putting the ball on the back of the net from six yards, by the way. <laughs> but it's a fantastic ball in. I mean, the defender, Mengi, has Mengi. an absolute nightmare. He's got to clear it with his left foot. He can't allow that ball to come across you. Yeah. Not against any player, let alone top nah, nah. quality players. I don't, I don't know why. He just doesn't clear it with his left foot. Obviously not comfortable in that situation, but it should be a, an easy clearance and no problem at all at this level. But you can't let it run across you in the six-yard box. Great shot of Grealish there, asking who it was a chance, it could have been handball. Yeah. He asked him, was it handball, handball? <laughs> no, no, no. Hit my chin. Hit my, Hit chin. my chin, all right. <laughs> now I can celebrate. Yeah. Brilliant cross, though. I mean, how many times yeah. do you see players get into that position? Either hit the front man, over hit the cross, but it was, it was just perfect for him. Now, there was a big talking point in that second half with a challenge by Jacob Brown yep. on Phil Foden. The referee, Tim Robinson, didn't even give a foul. Yep. What do we think here? I think it's a terrible decision. From the one from the referee, I think it's a terrible decision from the VAR. Because that yeah. is everything they told us to yeah. protect players, high, out of control. I mean, every directive they say, that is a clear red card. I mean, he doesn't even give a foul. And then for the VAR not to tell him, I don't know, I've just... Yeah, for me, it's a clear red card. I know why he doesn't give it. Why? Because he doesn't give it out because they don't leave the floor. They think every tackle when someone leaves the floor, it has to be a red card or it has to be a foul, it has to be a booking. But and I know there's a big debate and you need to have played the game to be up there to help them. This occasion, you need to have played the game and to be up there to help them. This is a leg-breaking tackle. This is a career-ending tackle and they haven't recognised this. Good job. Phil Foden's leg is... Mm off the floor. Yeah. If it's on the floor, planted, he snaps his leg in half there. That is a horrendous tackle and they got it all wrong. You wouldn't want to be on the end of that one, Jacob. Definitely not. Definitely not. I don't see that as being a really difficult decision. I mean, the number of times that they looked at it. Uh, yeah, I'm just... I'm trying not to get too angry because of the situation that we find ourselves in talking about it again. But for me, that was, should have been a simple decision. OK, we'll leave it there. We don't like an angry Alan Shearer. <laughs> not before Newcastle are about to play anyway. Uh, right, let's get some reaction to Manchester City's return to winning ways. Here he is, the match winner, Jack Grealish. Jack, congratulations. How much... Yeah, no, it, yeah, we needed a, um, yeah, a lot of patience, obviously, you know. I think we uh, dominated the first the first half. I can't really remember them having too many chances, and then obviously you know they get a goal at the end of the first half, which was um, 
which was obviously, you know, a blow for us. Um, and then, yeah, we come out second half, and that's what we were saying, you know, between each other, that we need to, you know, move the ball and not rush things. Um, you know, the more you move the ball, then the gaps open up, and... Um, and yeah, I think that's what we that's what we did in the second half. Yeah, when you cr create so many chances and you're not winning matches, you're four matches without a win, and you don't get the goal, and they get the goal. How do you not get anxious for second half? Um, no, listen, we've got um, you know the best manager in the world and and, and world class players, so um, that have dealt with a lot, you know, during their career. So um, I think that's the time, you know, that we have to use our experience. Uh, we have a lot of experienced players in there, um, and yeah, you know, we knew it was going to be one of them games. You know, fair play to them; they're, they're actually a really good team. I think better than a lot of people give them credit for. And obviously, you know, coming here uh, at this ground is, is difficult. Um, but yeah, luckily, you know, we, we we got the job done. And without Haaland, how pleased are you with the dynamics? Because of course, it changes the dynamics up front. Yeah, I think you know this is one game today where. You know, we, we would have been desperate for him. You know, when you know when the opposition team goes man for man. You know, Erling's brilliant. You know, to have up front, and I don't think a lot of teams in the world can leave any defender one v one with Erling. Uh, you know, because he's so strong, his pace and stuff. So um, obviously, Julian, you know, was up there today and done brilliant. You know, got a got a really good assist for myself. So um, yeah, it's a good day. How relieved are you to go back to winning form? Because you're obviously not used to getting four, four matches without a win, right? Jack? Yeah, I don't think I've done that since I've since I've arrived here. Um, listen, I think though, you know, a lot of people, I think, like to talk about City and uh, you know go on like it's a big crisis. Where in reality, we've we've played against very good teams. You know, we played. Um, Spurs, who have been unbelievable, Liverpool, who are top of the league, um, and then we played Chelsea away and Aston Villa away, who are who have got the, you know one of the best records in the whole of Europe. So um, yeah, we've, we've played brilliant teams. You know, we we lost one and drew three. You know, it's not the end of the world, um, but I think people like to like to pretend it is sometimes. So, yeah, no, I think within ourselves, you know, we knew we had to keep calm today and, um, yeah, buzzing to, to get back to winning ways. How did you see the dynamics, the mobility without Haaland today in this type of match? Well, it was really good. I think Julian was amazing with Phil, with Jack, with Bernardo, uh, Matteo, and, yeah, I put a lot of players in the middle to try to short passes. We try to avoid in this stadium, so the... The transition, the long balls, the loose duels, the make false, stupid falls, that put it corners, free kicks. When they happen, pff, they are much better than us, yes or yes. So that's why we need a, a lot, a lot of passes and be patient. And we knew they make men to men in a high pressing and try to break it and after be patient as well. And yeah, first half we don't concede. So I saw how the team suffer here. Mm -hmm. And of course, we suffered, I would say, to win. But in general, the way we played, uh, we, we control it, so I'm very, very, very pleased for the guys, and especially for the break day dynamic, the, the win games. You always say that it's easier to win when you're winning. Uh, so now that you passed the, the four matches without a win, what do you expect from, from now on? Now is rest. We are going to, to, to fly to Belgrade to already qualify first to to, to play a good game for prestige because we have to do it and and it's not a stop. So after Crystal Palace we will travel to to World Cup to Saudi Arabia and after come back again. So yeah, but of course it was important for the belief for ourselves to believe that uh, yeah the people say it's over but it's, we want to make them wrong and believe it still is not over. Still we want to be there. Uh, we'll be able. It depends on us how we perform. Just the city four off the top. Now, talking of good weeks, none better than Everton's. A third consecutive Premier League win. Not conceded a single to get three points. They just needed that win. It wasn't Vinci's by any stretch of imagination. You had to suffer. But once they got those two goals, and even at times set pieces coming into your box, they handled that well. It's, it's a big win for them. We got a title race this year, and that's what we all wanted. Yeah, as far as Manchester City's performance is, is concerned, it was controlled without them being as explosive as we know they, they can be. Yeah, we said before it, it was never going to be easy going to Kenilworth Road. We, we've seen teams previously that put up a fight. Second half, I just think Luton ran out of steam, made mistakes, unforced errors that didn't need to. It was so comfortable at half-time. 
but Man City can always, that little bit of a chance, you, you give them something to feed on, and that's what they did, and they came out winners in the end. It wasn't vintage, anything but, but it was the three points that, that really mattered for Man City. And as well as Luton did, particularly in the first half of, of that game, that defeat, coupled with Everton's result, leaves them looking slightly adrift in the inside the bottom three. With that gap to Everton now at four points. Yeah, you look at. I think you've got to forget Everton. They've got too much quality in the team and understanding, and they're going to get so many results. You just got to try and hope you can get a Nottingham Forest, a Crystal Palace, Bournemouth for an incredible run. Wolves, I don't see them in, in the equation. It's going to be so difficult for Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United. One of them has to almost produce a footballing miracle. That's how difficult it is. Try and find some wins from somewhere. Sheffield United picked up a good one yesterday. Luton have been in every match. I feel so sorry for him. Rob Edwards is doing a brilliant job with the players he has at his disposal. First half, as Michael says, they were excellent. He's just trying to hang on and trying to get those points. It's been heartbreaking, obviously, against Arsenal midweek and then again the today. If they could have just got three points out of those games, it would be incredible for them. But that's the Premier League. We might well have a story on our hands. And again, it might involve Luton, who've caused so many problems at Kenilworth Road for top teams so far this season. And they lead by a goal to nil. Deservedly so at the break, Jamie? Yeah, absolutely, in terms of that, that last chance. But it's been hard for them. I mean, don't get me wrong, Man City have had all the ball. And it just shows you need to have a bit of bravery at times when you do get it. Wonderful piece of play by Ross Barkley. Once they get that ball out into this area and you get Andrus Townsend on it, you think, well, OK, he's got that delivery. We've seen it so many times in the Premier League. He cuts back. Adebayo makes such an incredible leap. He gets above Ruben Diaz early. This is a bit of skill I'm talking about. That's bravery in your own half. You lose it there. The ball ends up in the back of your net. And they do so well. Holds off. Rodri and then they get away and they get down that side. It's so risky and you don't put you don't put Luton in risk in that bracket because you play to your strength but take nothing away. Goes in from, from uh, Lockyer and he's just confident in giving the ball to, to Ross Barkley, which we touched on before. The quality and this from Andros Townsend, he always has one thought in his mind. How do can I cross the ball? Can I chop back in onto my left? And he puts a fantastic ball in Adebayo. It's hard for Diaz, he's what running back. And he gets above. Is it because he gets early, doesn't it? The centre-back, it's your worst nightmare where you can see he gets up so quick hard. before you. As soon you. as the ball's going over your head, you're moving your feet quickly and you get in that position and the forward just gets a slight touch on, on your back and he's above you then. Then you're in big trouble. And then can Adebayo get a good contact? This yes, he does. He gets, up, like, he gets up there, but he's up already. Bam! And then you can't stop him. Yeah, Diaz, as soon as you Impossible. get in that position, you, it, it, it is. Sometimes the ball in is so good and, and the forward's pulled onto your shoulder. It doesn't matter what you, you talk about, defenders getting in bad body position. There was nothing he could do Definitely there. It was did. just magnificent play from, from Luton. It was that first little bit of quality that had. Andros had a couple of times, he was whipping it in with they his right foot. They were growing into the game, though. They were growing into the game and at the uh, fight, well, at the half-time whistle, Pep Guardiola was very angry with the... the Manchester City manager. And you can understand why, the way that first half has gone. Yeah, frustrating um, for a Man City point of view. Not created anywhere near as much as they could and should have. Um, but I think all the credit has to go to Luton. I think they've been unbelievable, well-organised, direct when they had to be. Um, great attitude and got the goal just before half-time. So it's been pretty much perfect from them. Yeah, and we were talking earlier on about your manager wanting pressing and work rate. Luton have been right in Manchester City faces. Yeah, I think they've got the, the blend perfectly right at the moment. You know, they're pressing high when they need to and then they sit nicely, nice and compact in their, their low block. So, yeah, you know, they've got the blend right so far. And the assist came from a man you know well, Andros Townsend, for the goal right on the stroke of half-time. Yeah, Andros don't need any invitation or even foot to put that ball in the box and that's the instruction from, from the manager and he... And he Shops it back onto his left foot, and you know exactly. Do you remember? If Adibayu, he knows exactly when that's coming in. Um, it doesn't hang about, you know, they moved the ball around actually for a few times. Barkley used some skill, this is what he's got, you know, showing his skills there. And then Doughty travels forward, Andros will be saying to it now, just roll it in there. And he, he doesn't matter what foot he comes in, he just chops it to the back post, and it's a great jump above Diaz. I think Edison has to do better as soon as that ball leaves Andros's foot. I think he has to come and take everything, whether he can collect it or he punches it. Adebayo does brilliantly, just peels away from Diaz. There's only one winner of that for well. It's a brilliant, for, for a dream a league, dreamland for a centre forward. But I, we're, we're sat here knowing what Andros is going to do because we've watched him for years. That's what he does, that's what he's good at. He's picked his spot, but what a header. The leap is amazing. I mean, he gets the flight of the ball quicker than Diaz and it's a fantastic header. Keeper's got no chance of it. But from a Man City point of view, I mean, I think he needs to get tighter on the cross to stop the cross because yeah. we know what he's going to do. If he goes down on his right, OK, so what?
But he's got to stop that cross quicker and the defender's got to do better with the ball in. Brilliant from a Luton point of view, though. Now, someone in this room um, pinpointed Luton's attitude uh, before the game and what they might do with it and how they might cause problems, and so it has materialised. Well, the, the evidence is there when you see what they did against Liverpool and what they did against Arsenal, and they were really unlucky in both those games, but they're doing exactly the same again. Tough to beat, everyone with the right attitude, everyone prepared to put a shift in, everyone prepared to run 30 or 40 yards back, everyone prepared to tackle and, and go to war, basically. That's what they're that, that prepared to do. The crowd, the crowd are reacting to that, which has given them that little bit more mm. extra, that little bit more incentive. You can see they're closing down. They're closing down high up the pitch against the Manchester City team, which over the years we've seen so many teams sit back and try and soak up pressure. But such is the confidence there and the belief at that ground. They're prepared to go and press them high and they're getting the rewards at the minute. However, you have to maintain that energy as a player, don't you, for, for 100 minutes probably these days against the champions like that. Yeah, it's looking that. It's going to be a 100-minute game as, uh, as they all are now. And yeah, it's all about their concentration now. Um, it is going to be tough. They're really going to have to dig deep in, in around the 70-minute mark. Um, I think Man City are probably going to try and stay patient and wait for their tiredness to kick in. But, you know, it could turn into a vintage uh, performance from Luton if they can uh, keep it that way and make clever substitutions along the way. OK, well, they certainly have. Derek Ray joined here on the commentary box, as always, by Lee Dixon. And it's all about action from the Premier League in this case. It is Manchester City up against Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, thank you, Derek. Always my favourite time of the week, spending time with you at games. We should be in for a belter here with these two. And here's the Manchester City lineup. Ederson gets the nod in goal. Alexander Zinchenko starts with Joao Cancelo in the fullback positions. Kevin De Bruyne starts with Rodri in central midfield. And the main forward is Gabriel Jesus. Joao Cancelo. Patient enough build-up. Can they carve out a chance? Must take the lead here. Well, they're going to be... I must say, I think it's impossible to take your eyes off Kevin De Bruyne when he's in top form and Lee, so much to like about the Belgian and the way he goes about his business. Absolutely. I'm just trying to think of a weakness. I'm not sure how good he is in the air. Heading, probably can still head the ball, but <laughs> everything else, left foot, right foot, sees a pass, scores goals, energetic, vibrant, hungry. I could go on all night long. Complete player. Got to it easily, the keeper. Losing the ball, Deli Alley. De Bruyne threading it through. Reguilon, now Son, promising move from Tottenham, and well, the defending not the best here, and a Tottenham Hotspur pretty clear. Well, I like that Derek, good refereeing, nice and strong, told the player exactly... Ball is loose! Rebier... Well, goalkeepers live a charmed life at time, but that was just brilliant. Really, really good goalkeeping. Lo Celso. Lo Celso. Bale. Son in the centre. Just not testing the...